Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'm going to tell you about my recent trip to Spain, which was the most awful trip I've ever had there. I'll tell you about all the various issues from car rental problems to losing my passport to having to change flights. I learned a lot of hard lessons on this trip, so hopefully I can pass on some knowledge to you so that you don't ever have to go through what I did. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have traveled the world, I own a couple of houses in Spain, and I'm on a creative journey to financial independence. I believe the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope you'll subscribe and join me on this journey no matter where you are starting from. If you've watched my videos for long, you likely know that I own a couple of houses in Spain, which means that Spain is a regular country on my list of travels. I was headed there for what was supposed to be a little more than a week to see the house that I just bought for $5,000. I have traveled a lot over the years and I have had only three experiences where it seemed like everything went wrong. I want to acknowledge that the story I'm telling is not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, and I know I have so much to be grateful for. It was mostly the compound effect of having so many little things happen one after another that left me feeling overwhelmed. As a matter of fact, the next time I leave on a trip and a couple of things go wrong before I even get there, I'm just going to turn around and go home. This trip really was a comedy of errors. I'm not laughing about it yet, but maybe one day. For now, I hope you can learn a few things, and I'll also tell you about the kindnesses that I don't want to overlook. Okay, so let's start out with the first thing that went wrong. I had three flights to get me from Orlando to Valencia. My first flight was to Atlanta, where I was supposed to have about a two-hour layover. They boarded us on the plane with Delta around the time they were supposed to. What they didn't tell us at first was that we did not yet have a pilot for the plane. After sitting for almost two hours, eventually the pilot arrived and apologized, saying that he was flying the Minnesota Timberwolves who had to wait out an ice problem. He said it kind of like we should think it was cool that he was flying a pro team and somehow be more understanding. I knew at this point that unless my second flight from Atlanta to Amsterdam was delayed, that I was going to miss my next flight. I arrived in Atlanta and my other flight had already left. It was around 10 p.m. and they had rebooked me for a flight that didn't leave until 4 p.m. the next day, landing me in Valencia a full 24 hours after I was supposed to arrive. Honestly, I found that I've been pretty impatient lately and I made the conscious decision to relax and find ways to look at the positive. This whole flight process was a little bit tricky. I booked my flights with Air France, but Delta and KLM were the airlines operating everything. I was confused about who to see about a hotel, but pretty quickly found a line of people waiting for Delta help in the airport. Once I got to the counter, the guy took my phone number and within a few seconds, I had been sent a link for a hotel and a $15 food voucher. When I clicked the link for the hotels, it gave me a list of about 10 or 15 hotels to choose from, a couple of which were higher rated hotels. I ended up choosing the Radisson. I didn't have to do too much, which was nice. Honestly, the process was pretty smooth. Once at the hotel, the person checking me in let me know that even though their restaurants were closed for the night, there was a nearby restaurant that delivered and accepts the food voucher from Delta. I found my room to be fairly nice, the bed was comfortable, and the bathroom was nice. I was able to order pizza that turned out to be really good, and I had an excellent night of sleep. At this point, I was still focused on just having a positive attitude. My flights from Atlanta to Amsterdam and Amsterdam to Valencia were mostly uneventful. Before I left Atlanta, I noticed that my boarding pass was a middle seat. I never pay for seat selection, but I'm also pretty bummed if my cheapness leaves me in a middle seat for a long haul flight. While at the gate waiting for boarding to begin, I was able to approach an attendant and ask if there was another seating option. He quickly changed my seat to an aisle, which I really appreciated. He wasn't exactly delightful, but whatever. And that's a tip I think you can always try. If a flight is full, there might not be much they can do, but it doesn't hurt to ask and see if a better seat is available. I brought chocolates for the flight attendants. I've talked about this before in a video about tips for flying. You can check that out right up here. Anyhow, the flight crew was so sweet about it. It was almost embarrassing. After takeoff, one of the attendants approached me with a glass of champagne and some sort of snack. And the champagne was served in a real glass, so it felt really fancy. She was like, are you the chocolate lady? <laughs> a nickname I plan to hold on to forever. 
They also brought me a little gift bag with a handwritten thank you card, two small bottles of wine and other snacks. Honestly, it was so sweet. And like I said, a little embarrassing to have so much attention given to me. Once I landed in Valencia, I headed over to Firefly to pick up my rental car. This is where things began to go horribly wrong, but I just didn't know it yet. I usually book with Firefly because I was familiar with them and had mostly decent experiences. My total price for a week with a car was supposed to come to 54 euro. I know that they charge a fuel charge and additional taxes, but I was a little surprised when an amount of 500 euro popped up on the screen of the credit card reader. Usually they would collect maybe a 200 euro hold on my credit card as a deposit, but I found this to be a little high. So I said to the woman, can you tell me what these charges are? She reassured me that it was just the car rental, the fuel charge and the deposit. I said, okay, that's fine if it's just a large deposit. I was just wondering because my rental cost was supposed to be 54 euro and this just seems a little high. She repeated again that it was just the car rental cost, the fuel charge and the deposit. Then I said, okay, how much is the total without the deposit? She responded that it was around 140 euro. I was fine with this. I knew I would get a refund for the fuel charge if I returned the car full. She pulled out a single piece of paper for me to sign and was pointing to the information about the car damage, showing me that the car had been in an accident on the driver's side and that they had already marked it on the sheet. Then she points to the three areas for me to sign. In the past, when I've rented cars, there has usually been a sheet for me to sign about the damage and another sheet that has my contractual agreement. In this case, everything was on one sheet, but I didn't realize that. I also didn't believe that someone would directly lie to my face multiple times. She handed me the keys and off I went. After an hour drive home, I parked the car on one of the streets in my little town and went to pick up the contract. This is where my head started spinning and my blood began to boil. Some of the charges were listed in short form, so they weren't particularly clear and easy to read. But what I could read was the estimated total at the bottom of the charges, which came to nearly 400 euro. I started to feel sick and could not believe what I was looking at. She had added three different kinds of insurance to my rental without asking me anything about them and without my permission. She was pointing to the damage of the car on the sheet, I believe to distract me from seeing the charges at the time that I signed. I never, and I mean never, take out extra insurance for a car. I would rather pay $1,000 in damages one time out of five years than to pay $200 in insurance every time I rent a car. This woman had fully taken advantage of me and I was the moron that hadn't caught on to it. A lot of things upset me in this world, but I don't think anything bothers me more than a thief. All so she could get some lousy commission. She stole over $200 from me. I tried calling Firefly, the office of Valencia, the customer service line, but do you think anyone answered or helped me? No. I eventually found a couple of different email addresses. I explained the whole situation and said, I will bring back the car tomorrow if this cannot be addressed and changed. The whole next day, I didn't hear anything from them. Keep in mind that this completely affected me mentally and emotionally, ruining so much of that first 24 hours in Spain. Finally, toward the end of that next day, I decided to drive the car back to Valencia. About 10 minutes before getting to the airport, I received an email saying that the Valencia office had forwarded my email to the customer service team and that I would need to wait to hear back from them. I decided to go ahead and go into the office. The woman who had lied and stolen from me was there, but was assisting other customers. There was another woman there, and when I mentioned why I was there, she said, Oh, you sent the email, right? She told me that they had forwarded it to customer service and that they would definitely get back to me, maybe in one hour. She explained that they can't make any changes to the contracts from there in the office once they're in effect, only customer service can. I said fine, and I asked if I was going to be able to drive the car back out of the garage, and she said yes. Well, was I able to drive the car out of the garage? No. It was a back and forth situation that took me another 30 minutes to get my parking validated. So I drive home. I never should have done this. I should have returned the car on the spot. But I also knew that it was beyond the first 24 hours and that I'd have to pay for the car for a second day anyway. Plus, I was hopeful that the Firefly customer service team would have some level of decency. 
Well, I was wrong. Long story short, the only responses I would get from them included a photo of my contract and they basically said, screw you, you signed the contract. They never once even began to mention or address any of the concerns I had. It didn't matter that their employee had lied to me. They offered zero alternative. They didn't offer to backdate the contract. They didn't offer to update the contract with only the first two days having the insurance coverage, nothing. Just you're the moron that signed it. After that, I sent a very strongly worded response. It wasn't my best behavior. I lost my mind on them. This had now taken over all of my mental and emotional energy for my first three days in Spain. I wish I could control that more, but I just couldn't believe this woman lied to me like that. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Anyway, after pointless back and forth that day with the customer service email people who were completely useless, I decided to return the car. This time when I go in, the second woman was there and another woman who seemed to be like a supervisor. The initial woman who lied to me was not there this time. The woman who knew me explained to the other what I was there for. Then the woman who seemed to be a supervisor let me know that there really was nothing they could do to change the contract once it's in effect. She seemed sincere and was the first person in this entire situation to apologize to me. She said that because no one else was there to witness it, they just really don't know what happened. But she said again that she was sorry. I let her know that I wanted to return the car, which she helped me to complete. Just the two days of that rental cost me over $100 because of the insurance add-ons. But more than that, it had cost me three days of my time and a whole lot of stress. I didn't care if I had to pay even more somewhere else. 